What's up everyone, welcome back for another video. So after I made my video on turning a Dell Optiplex into a gaming computer, I had a ton of really awesome questions and suggestions from all of you in the community. I really love seeing that and I figured that I'd take it as a hint that I needed to do a follow-up video with some more information for you guys on what GPUs are actually possible to upgrade to in these pre-builds and more importantly, which one would be your best choice as far as price to performance and power draw. So let's go ahead and roll our intro and get right into it. Let's go. URCD key has discounted codes for games and software that are a fraction of what you would pay if you purchase them from a retail store. More specifically, they have great prices on their Microsoft Office 2016 bundle that comes with a Windows 10 license as well. If that's not enough, you can also use my promo code RAV20 to receive 20% off the already discounted price. Just type in your product you're looking for, add it to the cart, view your cart, head to the checkout, type in my promo code, once again, RAV20, and see the sweet savings appear. Check the links in the video description to learn more. All right, now please remember that I'm aware that there are a plethora of cards out there that could work for you personally, but I am just giving you a pretty comprehensive list based on my experience and research that will work well for 1080p gaming. Now, when choosing the cards, I researched what cards will be able to work with the Dell Optiplex 3020, 9010, and 9020, as these are normally the most popular models I see people wanting to upgrade to. Also, the 7020, I think I forgot about that one. But anyway, the two Optiplex systems that I have on hand right now are the 9010 with an Ivy Bridge i5-3570 and a 3020 with a Haswell i5-4590. For our benchmarks, we'll be using the 3020 as it has a more updated CPU and more headroom room and its power supply unit at 290 watts. So with that in mind, here are our card choices starting with NVIDIA. So starting with the GTX 1070 eight gigabyte, you can get a model that only needs one eight pin PCIe connector like my old one. So the upgrade is possible, but honestly, I don't advise it as you'll start seeing CPU bottlenecks with our i5 we're gonna be using today. And the price of these just don't justify the performance or lack thereof because of that bottleneck that I just referenced. And I'll link a video from the YouTube channel called The Game Bench below that will show the bottleneck problem and power draw in detail. So huge shout out to that dude because he did some awesome testing and I'll probably reference this video again as we move forward with this video. Next, you have the GTX 1660 six gigabyte version that only requires a six pin PCIe connector. So this is a great option for those systems because you can get one that is fairly short so it's easy to fit and they are pretty good on power so they do not require a PSU upgrade and you can find one for fair fairly cheap usually. Another option that I have right here in the studio actually is the GTX 1650 Super 4 gigabyte. So this card requires a six pin PCIe connector and is another awesome card choice for these systems as you shouldn't be seeing that much of a bottleneck on your CPU and it will give you a great price to performance as you can grab one of these for about $160 on Amazon right now. The next card I'd recommend is the GTX 1650 4 gig and I highly suggest getting one that doesn't require a PCIe connector because it'll make it a lot easier. Uh, again, this would be one of the easier choices if you wanted a card with no external power required and still wanted a more updated card or just simply wanted to buy a brand new card. Uh, these are plug and play, so they match very well with these Optiplex systems because they're very easy to use. Now moving on to the GTX 1060 six gigabytes. So this only requires a six pin PCIe connector and it's one of my favorite choices for Optiplexes as it fits perfectly in the 3020 I have here in the studio. Well, I say perfectly, but it like just is barely able to fit under the SATA power port on the motherboard. Uh, it will cause you some more trouble in the 9010 because it will cover two of your SATA ports and it may be a bit tricky to fit in there. And as for the 9020, it should be very similar to the 3020 I have here in the studio and it should fit like a glove. Another similar option is the GTX 1063 gig. So this also only requires one six pin PCIe connector. And really the only downside to this card is that it becomes an issue with newer games that require more VRAM. But if you can find one cheap used like I did, it was only I think $80. Uh, it can be a great budget option for some gaming horsepower, especially if the games you play don't require a ton of VRAM. Also, they're usually very small, 
like this one I have right here. So they fit basically in every model of Optiplex we're discussing today with ease. So the last option on the Nvidia side I'd recommend is the GTX 1050 Ti, four gigabytes. So this card requires no PCIe power and is more meant for the low end systems or very entry level gaming systems. Uh, this will be my very budget choice on the Nvidia side if you can find one for cheap like I did. This one was like 70 bucks. Now moving over to AMD, here are a few choices that I would go for. So just because some of you will ask, the RX 580 that I have right here will work with these systems, but you will need to first replace your power supply as the stock 290 watt isn't enough juice for this card. Second, you're gonna have to modify the case so it will actually fit, at least in my case, because the model of this R RX 580 that I have right here absolutely will not clear the hard drive cage. So that would need uh, to come out. And third, be ready for a bottleneck on the CPU side because these pack a ton of horsepower that may just be a bit too much for the i5 we'll be testing today. Now, if you move up to an i7, you might have some better luck. Now, moving on to the RX 574 or eight gig. So if you can find one for cheap on the used market, this can be one of the best options to max out your GPU performance with these Optiplex builds. Now, you will still need to follow my instructions for the 580 I just mentioned before, as this will draw more power than than just about every other card I've mentioned really, uh, even more than the 1070 even. Uh, so you can use it with the stock power supply, but I would not recommend it as you will be pushing things to their limits with this. To add to that, you will most likely have to modify your case to fit these as they are usually similar size to the 580 I just showed you. But if you can find one that fits behind the drive bays, then disregard what I just said, pop it in your system and make the necessary modifications for power draw. And the last card on the AMD side I'd recommend is the RX 560 four gigabyte. All right guys, post-production Ricky here. So I just wanted to make sure you guys were aware before I go on to the RX 560 that you also can go with the RX 5500 or the 5500 XT at this time right now, putting you in somewhere in the performance between the RX 570 and 580. So I just wanted to point that out for you guys just before you decide to shout it at me in the comments. So be aware those two options are available to you as well. Now this card requires no PCIe power, just like the 1050 Ti, and is meant for low end systems or entry level gaming. So this one is just plug and play, and I recently threw a short version from AS Rock in a Del Vostro build and got great entry level 1080p gaming numbers from it. I'll link that video for you up here. Now I just gave you a ton of information on GPUs, but before you can fully narrow the list down to which one is best for your situation, we need to know how you can actually accommodate these GPUs into these systems. Systems, right? So here's a few ways that you can fit these cards into your system and make them work. First is the easiest way and most popular. It is simply grab me a card that is like a shorty version or low profile version like a 1050 Ti or RX 560, which typically don't require any PCIe power and basically just chuck it in there. Now, I, the one I'm showing you right here isn't exactly like a small or short version, but it still fits and doesn't require any external power, so that's why I'm showing it. This is great because it makes the upgrade fast and easy while also keeping the worry of power draw out of the picture in most cases. Second, you can purchase a SATA to six pin adapter to give yourself a PCIe connection that many of the cards we talked about today will need. For example, the GTX 1060 six gigabyte I'm showing you right here. Now, if your card requires an eight pin PCIe connector like this RX 580, don't worry, they make adapters for that too. Again, this is very simple to do and the adapters only cost like six to eight bucks on Amazon and I'll have them listed in the link below for you guys. Now your third option is the most complicated because this is where the model of your Optiplex you have comes into play. You can obviously opt to change out the stock power supply for a different one that has more power available. But here's the catch. If you have a board like my 3020 I have here, and this will also be the same for a 9020, you will need an adapter to make it work as these boards use a proprietary pinout. If you want to use one of these, I'll link that below as well. Or alternatively, you can go on eBay and grab one of these upgraded Dell power supplies out of an Optiplex 7020, 9020, or Precision T1700. They're all the same. So, and you can take this and drop it right in. So these should be plug and play, but the only downside to this is that they are pretty expensive right now, coming in at 50 bucks for only a 360 watt power supply unit. 
Along with this power supply upgrade, you will most likely have to modify your case because most of the cards that you're gonna upgrade your power for are gonna need this modification. All right, now we have a good idea on what cards you can possibly use in these systems and actually how you can get them to work. Let's see what kind of performance you can get with a solid upgrade from these cards. Now, I always love to involve you all in the community in what I'm doing, so I posted a poll on the community section of our channel for which cards you guys would most like to see me test with one of these Dell Optiplexes. And from the poll, it looks like you guys overwhelmingly wanted me to test the, uh, where is it, the 1650 Super right here. And uh, that was the clear winner. And then coming in at second, you guys definitely wanted to see me test the 1060 6 gigabyte. So let's go ahead and put these two cards in our Optiplex 3020 with the stock 290 watt power supply and use one of our SATA six pin adapters to give these cards the juice they need to run some benchmarks. All right, now after those benchmarks, I can draw the conclusion that both of our cards we tested seem to be very good choices with just a couple of differences. With the 1060 six gig, if you want the best overall performance for the money, I'd say grab one of these if you can find it for cheap like I did. This one right here was only 120 bucks because you will only need this card and just a $6 adapter to achieve very close to 60 FPS or higher performance in 1080p depending on the game. Now with the 1650 Super on the other hand, 
you have a card that costs around 160 bucks and ended up taking the overall win in our Call of Duty Modern Warfare test and most obviously in the Red Dead Redemption 2 test as we were able to hit a solid 60 frames per second. That was pretty cool. The other thing you have to remember is that the 1650 Super also has the new Turing architecture inside it, so streaming, yes I said it, streaming might be possible with a damn Dell Optiplex now. So if you want to see me try streaming out on this Optiplex system, make sure you smash the like button for me along with that. Make sure you go ahead and comment down below if you want to see that stream or anything else involving these Optiplex systems. And also, if you really, really enjoy my content and you always want to stay updated on my newest videos and streams, make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn the notifications on so you'll always be notified when a new video or a new stream comes out. But that's going to be it for me today, everyone. I hope you found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Later.